one another, they're united and they're one. And what happens? Here comes this like new life. And that is like so that people can see God who creates life out of nothing. Out of love, God created us. Parents do the same thing. And you know what? When a baby is born, the baby really cannot contribute. They cannot do anything for the parents. You know, they cry, they soil their diapers, you know, like they really don't do anything, right? They mess up parents' sleeping cycle. It's a lot of this, but you know what? Parents, it doesn't go really down. If it's their child, even if the child has deformities or disabilities, it's difficult, but they still love them unconditionally. Why? Because it is created in their image. They feed the child, they guide the child, they correct the child, they do all these things. Why? Because that is who God is. God creates us out of nothing. And in spite of the fact that we can't do anything to God, what He does is He gives us our daily bread. He corrects us. He disciplines us. He guides us. He gives us wisdom. He teaches us how to live. But one thing happened, and that is this thing called sin. Sin is basically anything that will prevent us from demonstrating or displaying who God is through the way we are. So, Adam and Eve sinned. What happened? God said, it is not good for a man to be alone, but then man became alone. He was separated from God. But you know what also happened? It not only separated us from God, it separated us from one another. We became so self-absorbed and it all became about ourselves. If I have two dollars and someone doesn't have any, well, lucky me. You're not going to say, okay, well, since I have more than this person, I'm going to give half of what I have, or I can give all of them if I can survive to this person who doesn't have it. A lot of times, what we do that are sinful are simply things that really distorts the image of God. You know, like in, in a lot of youth groups, we talk about sex often, right? You know, but we talk about sexual purity and all these different things. And we say, you know, you should not have sexual relationship with someone before you get married. Why? Because you need to be pure. Well, what does that even mean? You know, well, if, I, if God's going to, like, you know, forget my sins, then I can just do whatever I want to do and just apologize to God, and God will cleanse me from all unrighteousness, and I can get married with the one I want. And, you know, what's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with it is that it destroys the image of God. If you're sleeping around with different people just for fun, not because you are committed to one another in this loving relationship, then when people see what you're doing, you're not going to be able to see this beautiful, united God the Father and the Son in the way you're related to other people. That's huge. God is so concerned about God's people showing to the world what kind of God exists. In the Old Testament, he said, I'm going to choose these people called the Israelites. I'm not going to choose them because they're my nation, because they're weak and they need me. So I can work through them so that the world can see that I am the sustainer of this whole nation. But one of the things that Jesus, not Jesus, God said through Moses was if one of these people intentionally breaks one of the commandments that I have given them, that they shall be cut off from their people. Meaning they gotta get executed. If you go to the Old Testament, there's a passage in Numbers, uh, 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 a passage in the book of Numbers, chapter 14. One God is picking up sticks on the Sabbath, and guess what happens? God tells Moses, you go and stone that man because he has sinned willfully. And you'll say, God, why are you so angry in the, in the Old Testament time? I like this like loving Jesus God in the New Testament. I really don't like this angry, judgmental God in the Old Testament. You know why God did that? There's another story. 
God tells the nation of Israel, go into the land of Canaan. And there are a lot of other people living there. Go and kill all of them, including women, children, and old people. Get rid of all of those that I don't wish And you might say, God, why are you so angry? You know what the answer is? He said that because God is love. And he wants God's people to show to the world what kind of God exists. And if God's people within the nation of Israel were doing things that did not reflect God's image correctly, God said, you know what? It is better for the world, for this person who distorts the image of God to be removed and allow God's people to be made pure so that when they see God's people, they see me. Then God's people compromising doing things that don't reflect God anymore, so they'll have no chance of seeing God on this planet through His people. And guess what? I have a phone here, and I'm going to be done soon, so just bear with me, right? Here's a high, um, you know, pretty high-tech technology, you know, high-tech smartphone. And this was made particularly uh, to make phone calls, you know, web, web browsing, play games, but someone made this with a purpose. And let's say, I say, oh, you know what? I'm going to completely cut off the purpose of this phone, and I'm just going to use it any way I want to. And let's say, you know what? These walls look kind of bland, so I'm going to put some pictures on it, and I get, you know, these nails, and I'm going to start using this phone to, you know, <laughs> yeah, put nails in the wall. And guess what? You know what? If I do that, I might be able to put three nails or four before the screen cracks, before I will not be able to use this as a phone anymore. And you know what sin does? Sin does exactly that. We really ignore God's purpose for why He created us. He created you, 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 and me for the purpose of being one just as God the Father and the Son are one, so that God can say, you know what, if you really want to get to know who I am, what kind of God I am, you should be able to look at these Christians, people who call themselves God's people, and by looking at how they love one another, and how they're united as one people of God, with a singular purpose of wanting to show the world what kind of God we have, you know, He gave us that purpose, and if we completely detach our Christian life from that purpose, then when we do our own things, that is very similar to what I can do with this phone, you know, putting nails into the wall. What I'm going to do is I am going to hurt myself. And if I continue that path, I'm going to continue to hurt myself to the point that I am no longer capable to fulfill God's purpose of why He created me. If this is broken, you know what? I cannot fix it by myself. The only thing I can do is send it back to where this was made and ask the maker who made this to repair it, to renew it, or to replace it. What is the gospel? I'll say it's very simple. Jesus died on the cross. And what he envisioned of those people who trust in Christ would be that they may be one. Which means Christian life was never intended to be, you know, something that you do by yourself. And I wasted my life because that is how I viewed my Christian life. I said, you know what, I really don't want to Christians. If I have my Bible, if I do my daily devotions, if I listen to sermons online, and if I do what is right, then that is all I need to do until I get to heaven. And you know what the Bible says? That is not how we do my mission to get home. We need to think about that. We need to switch our focus on like, how we live our Christian life from thinking about heaven and hell after we die to God wanting us to love one another so intimately, modeling after how Father loves the Son, and the Son loves the Father, that the world may see you and me and say, you know what? They give me a strong confidence that their God exists. And that the only way they can love one another in that way is because Jesus 
actually came to this earth, forgave their sins, took away their sins, and allowed them a new opportunity where they can mimic. Okay, this is it. You've spoken long enough, so quit it. <laughs> That was the voice of the spirit, by the way. That was myself. So, yeah, where was I? Oh, yeah. So why, the reason why Jesus came, why he died on the cross, is so that because of your sin, you were separated from God, but you were also separated from one another. And God is saying, I'm sending you Jesus. So your sin can be forgiven, so that your relationship with the Father is restored. But not only that, I'm going to put you into this community called the body of Christ, and I'm going to make that person one member of this entire body. So as that person is connected to the next member, and they work together, they'll be able to fulfill the mission of the day. I'm going to stop there because for the rest of the weekend, we're going to continue to talk about what that view means and what that should look like. In, in Washington, D.C. area, within your church. And uh, I'm going to wrap it up. So just think about it, right? If Paul never used the word hell in his writings, probably the understanding of connecting the gospel to hell is not what Jesus or Apostle Paul intended. And if we look at what Jesus had to say, what he had to say about the reason I'm dying on the, on the cross is so that people who believe in me will have a new relationship where they can actually love one another and be united so that the world can see these Christians so called followers of Christ and be convinced that we have a triune God who loves us and who has sent us a Savior so we can also be added to those people, the community of love. So the more Christians we have, the more strong proof that we'll have to the world that God exists and He has sent us the Savior. Think about it in your time. Looking forward to sharing more tomorrow. Mm -hmm.